will be conducting the skill program and I will be conducting the KCOG national program. So this year we have decided that it will be there on every Thursday at 7.30. So when we were just discussing last week, Nitya suggested me your name, sir. I said, it is great if sir accepts and you please try because I don't have much personal contact with sir, but I know him very well. And I am a teacher of his daughter at Belgavi and I have visited him and it will be a great pleasure to listen to him. And immediately he phoned me back, sir has accepted. Then I said, we'll go ahead with that. And that's how today we are here to listen to one of the great surgeons which India has produced and more so a laparoscopic surgeon and who is a well-known person to each and everyone. Dr. Sailesh, sir, uh, I personally thought that this should be the topic because I know the way you dissect, I know the way you open up whole uh, and this Record, recording act in recording act. PG students and also benefit the consultants. During my undergraduate days, my teacher used to tell me, as is your pathology, so is your medicine. And as is your anatomy, so is your surgery. I think unless you have a very good knowledge of anatomy, you cannot become a good surgeon. And the way you dissect the things and show us, I thought your half an hour, 40 minutes talk should stimulate everybody to take up the laparoscopy and take up the OBGYN. And without taking much time, we are just inviting you to uh, address our the KCOG. Right now, already um, number is increasing to 100. By the time you start and talk, and uh, so go ahead, probably a huge number will be there to listen to you, sir. I request Dr. Vidya, briefly introduce Dr. Sailesh, Vidya. Uh, thank you very much, sir, and uh, thank you, Sajan, sir, for this opportunity. Um, the very fact we are having so many logins tells us how popular Shailesh, sir, is. Sir, you have trained all of us, and I proudly say that after coming to you at a personal note, that my surgical skill just went up by 100-fold, I can tell you. What I was doing before, I felt was all nonsense and later I just refined my techniques and I'm sure everybody in India, endoscopic surgeons who have been trained will say the same thing. Uh, to talk about, sir, I feel he is teacher of teachers. He has been teaching. I mean, the moment he starts talking, there is so much of teaching and you absorb. And as um, Hiramat sir said that anatomy, I think even Grace didn't describe as much as you have described, sir, the pelvic anatomy to all of us. And uh, sir has the credit of doing the first transplant surgery in our country. And he the, uh, uh, the outcome is a lovely female baby. And he has been so many uterine transplant he has done. Sir, you have made us proud by getting into AAGL. The first Indian to get into AAGL committee to become the office bearer in AAGL, wherein Indians are not recognized. I think Shailesh sir is the first priority there. And then he has been faculty in all the Indian workshops, which we do. And above all that, I think we sell our brochure with your name, sir. As we are selling our um, skill transfer with your name. So the same way, we sell our brochure with your name. And there are so many things to your credit, the awards, you have published so many publications and the Pune technique of doing a radical hysterectomy, which is coined by you and which is done, shown by you. I think everybody follows. I, the people who are doing radical surgeries are all your descendants only. And then of course you have got the Golden Telescope Award and AGL uh, Times Excellent Surgeon Award. So with um, a lot of, uh, I mean, joy to listen to your lecture. I hand over the mic to you, sir. So good evening. Thank you, Vidya, for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction. And uh, actually, people are very excited and waiting for his uh, deliberations. Over to you, sir, Dr. Shailesh. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much. At the outset, Dr. Vidya Bhatt. Dr. Hirema, Dr. Baswaraj, Dr. Manjula, and of course, uh, a lot of other people, Dr. Pai, 
so all, i know almost all of you and it's always a pleasure uh, to be with kesoga i have been associated with a lot of programs with dr vidya but and of course i have been coming to karnataka my special love is because my daughter is getting trained in karnataka she speaks kannada quite fluently now and <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. so nice so nice so she is finishing and you are honored and proud yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's proud. a pleasure to be always there and of course uh, when uh, i came to know by dr vidya but that it has going to be on pelvic anatomy a topic which is so near and dear to me that i thought that i should be uh, uh, not be uh, taking losing this opportunity because this is something which i take pride on because my mission in my life is to have uh, surgeons duplicate my skills because i personally feel that everything that i do is duplicable and it is not for select few surgeons who should be doing these kind of surgeries more people doing this kind of surgery i remember 2002 when i did my first radical hysterectomy there was a lot of opposition to what i did but time has gone because the best way to make this acceptable is to teach people make them learn and make them do the same things make them feel the adrenaline surge when you do such kind of surgeries and they are happy to do it so without wasting time i will go ahead with my presentation yes. understanding pelvic anatomy so what has changed has anatomy changed is the biggest question that people ask me no anatomy has not changed it is our understanding of anatomy which is change and learning is a treasure so this is the first step in mastering laparoscopic surgery we should be knowing laparoscopic pelvic anatomy applied surgical principles we are not here to learn anatomy as an anatomist we are here to learn anatomy as about how to use the knowledge of anatomy to do good surgery so it's all about anatomy irrespective of what kind of surgeries you do whether you do robotic surgery whether you do laparoscopic surgery whether you do uh, any kind of open surgery it's all about anatomy anatomy and nothing else but anatomy the word that i coined was in laparoscopic surgery because it is more important in laparoscopic surgery what i say is called as predictive anatomy what is predictive anatomy is because you are seeing a limited field what lies where what comes next and anticipating the next structure based on anatomical knowledge is what i called as predictive anatomy i have taught a lot of people so when you do the anatomy should play in your mind first and only executed on the table which is very very important preliminary concepts in pelvic anatomy please understand ladies and gentlemen that pelvic anatomy is a constant anatomy with very few variations and if this is the biggest statement that i am making i have not seen in more than 1000 radical hysterectomies that i have done and uterine artery arising from the external iliac artery meaning the anatomy is constant and therefore if the anatomy is constant there is no reason for us to say that well i will not learn anatomy or we had a very distorted anatomy anatomy is constant it is the thing that you have to understand and a thorough knowledge of anatomy leads to better surgery so let's start what are the things that we are concerned in the anatomy we are concerned about the sacral promontory why because at the level of the sacral promontory the pelvic anatomy uh, the pelvis starts then we should know about the fascia we should know about the faces the vessels of the pelvis and the nerves of the pelvis the sacral promontory is the highest peak it is like the mountain of the everest mountain from where the pelvis starts the pelvis starts beyond the sacral promontory it forms a fixed reference point where the pelvic anatomy seems to be distorted what is the biggest aspect of sacral promontory is none of the pathologies of the pelvis whether it is large fibroid cervical fibroid endometriosis or any cancer reaches up to the sacral promontory so if this is the situation start your dissection at the summit that is at the level of the sacral promontory whenever the anatomy is distorted at the level of the sacral promontory the ureter crosses from the lateral to the medial side and continues to remain as the most medial tubular structure so what do you understand if you remain medial to the ureter there is no way you can damage internal iliac vessel or any other vessels because ureter is the most medial thing there is bifurcation of the common iliac vessels the superior hypogastric axis lies between and medial to the 
common iliac vessels. So if you go, when you do sacral polypoplexy, if you take too much of a suture medial, then you are likely to damage the superior hypogastric plexus. It is the initiation point of transperitoneal paraortic lymph node dissection because it is where the line of mesentery, which travels from the left side to the right sacroiliac joint, that is the anterior superior iliac spine, it starts. So you have to cut the line of mesentery so that you can have all the small bowel coming into the right iliac fossa and none of the uterine pathologies reach beyond the sacral promontory. So whenever you are in trouble, start your dissection at sacral promontory. That is the take-home message. Anatomy of the vessels, which way to go? It is a better guide for dissection. For a, as a common endoscopic surgeon, what is more important for them is to understand where is the vessel, which is the vessel. And this is what we see in the entire diagram. But is this what we are interested in? No, we are not interested in having a knowledge about this because we know that this is what is written in the books. So this is what is important for us. Look at the aorta, look at the IVC. What do you see? There are no anterior tributaries, no anterior branches on the aorta except the inferior mesenteric artery. How do you use this knowledge of anatomy? Very simple. You want to do paraortic dissection, just remain parallel to the anterior wall of the IVC and that of the aorta because there are no vessels. So this is how you use the knowledge of anatomy to do the dissection. Parallel, you will never damage. Had there been any vessel arising from the anterior aspect of the aorta or IVC, you would be in trouble. So the nodes, the pre-aortic, the pre-cable nodes and the paracable nodes, you can be easily dissected. The lumbar vessels lie at a lower border from the aorta and not at the higher level. So you can do this dissection very easily. The same goes with the external iliac artery and the vein. The external iliac artery and the vein is devoid of any branches. It is devoid of any tributaries except for the external iliac vein and the artery, the superior, the inferior epigastric vessels, and of course the inferior circumflex iliac vessel which forms later on the, the corona mortis. So when you want to do the nodal dissection, using this knowledge of anatomy that there are no branches of the external iliac artery, no tributaries of the external iliac vein, always do the dissection parallel to the artery and the vein because if you do this, there is no way you can damage the major vessels. And this is important. This is what I was talking about at the level of the sacral promontory. You can see there is a bifurcation of the common iliac artery at the level of the sacral bifurc at this level of the sacral promontory. You can see the superior hypogastric plexus. So if you see if you take a suture too much medial when you do a sacral you will damage the superior hypogastric plexus, leading to a little amount of problem when you want to pass the stools and you will wonder what has happened, why this is rectum is not functioning because you have damaged the superior hypogastric plexus. What about the internal iliac artery, which is the most important artery for a gynecologist? Why is it important? Because this is the only vessel which is supplying the uterus and the division which is more important is the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. The anterior division of the internal iliac artery traverses for a long distance after the bifurcation before the first branch, which is the uterine artery is given. So how do you understand this? If that is a long length, which is available for ligation. Similarly, look at the length of the uterine artery. The uterine artery we have measured is about seven centimeters in length before it reaches the uterus. So in case you are bleeding, when you take do a, a hysterectomy, you should be aware that you can ligate the uterine artery laterally. So God has given you a long lens of this artery. The third important thing that you can visualize on this video, in this slide, is that the superior vasculum artery arises at a distal level. And not only at a distal level, but it is also, there is a space which is there between the superior vesicle artery and the uterine artery, and that is the paravesicle space. So when you dissect the paravesicle space, you can spare the superior vesicle artery. You can only selectively take the uterine artery. Again, a picture to show the superior vesicle artery, and then you can see 
almost a six centimeter of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, which traverses a long distance. So whenever you want to ligate the internal iliac artery, the, uh, the, the, the inference that you should take is ligate the internal iliac artery at a more distal level because you have a long length of the anterior division available. Again, a picture to show how much amount of traveling of the internal iliac artery is done. If you ligate the internal iliac artery close to the bifurcation, just below the internal iliac artery lies the common iliac vein. But as the internal iliac artery goes ahead, you can see that it is going towards the bladder to create the medial umbilical ligament. The vein goes down. So there is a natural space which is created between the artery and the vein. So the more distal you ligate, the more better it is. There is a separation from the internal iliac vein. And therefore, when you lift up the internal iliac artery, there is no way you can damage the internal iliac vein. What about this? This is what I was trying to say. You can see that there is a space between the uterine artery and the superior vesicle artery. That space is called as the paravesicle space. And the, this is the space which you can dissect without damaging the superior vesicle artery and selectively taking the uterine artery. This is how the uterine artery looks at. So clamping the uterine artery a little bit proximally, that is at the level of origin, and that will decrease the risk of injury to the ureter. So you can see there is a single uterine artery at the origin. Then it bifurcates into one branch, which is going towards the uterus, one branch, which is descending cervical artery. So when you do a total laparoscopic hysterectomy, of course, you stay very close to the uterine artery. Uh, or to the uterus, but in case there is a lot of bleeding from there, you should know the anatomy. You can still go laterally and take care of the uterine artery. What about the uterine artery and the veins? Long before we have been trained that the artery and veins accompany each other. That is not the truth. The artery goes anterior to the ureter. The veins go below the ureter. So how do you use this knowledge of anatomy? If there is bleeding, just identify whether it is an arterial bleeding or a venous bleeding. If it is an arterial bleeding, of course, the ureter should be dipped down because it goes anterior to the ureter. If it is a venous bleeding, the veins are going to come from below the ureter. So you lift up the ureter and you will see the veins below. Knowledge of anatomy helping you to do good surgery. What about the obturator artery? The obturator artery is the only lateral branch of the internal iliac artery. It always lies underneath the obturator nerve. So the inference that you should take is the obturator artery and the vein, they are underneath or below the obturator nerve. So when you do the pelvic node dissection, always remain superficial to the obturator nerve. If you go below the obturator nerve, the bleeding will start because there is a presence of artery and vein. So you know about this, but what I'm trying to tell you is giving only the words to what we have already been doing. What is corona mortis? Corona mortis is a communication between the external and the internal iliac vein. The external iliac vein through the circumflex iliac vein, which lies on the pelvic bone, communicates with the obturator vein. And you can see that the obturator vein is lying below the obturator nerve. So if you remain superficial to the obturator nerve, this corona mortis does not come. Corona mortis is the distal limit of your pelvic lymph node dissection. And why is it called corona mortis? Is because if you damage the vein, there is bleeding from the internal iliac vein as well as the external iliac vein because that's the communication which is existing. It is more so for the surgeons who do the hernia surgeries than for a gynecologist. Again, to show you some pictures, the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, the superior vesicle artery, this is the space between these two. All these I am again showing you just to make sure that you understand these vessels. Then, then this is the corona mortis. Now coming to the fascias of the pelvis, which is probably the most important thing. For a surgeon in a laparoscopic setting, the fascias of the pelvis are much better seen. All the organs are covered by the fascias. Why is it that after the laparoscopic surgery, you do not get adhesions? This is one question which is repeatedly asked to me by a lot of my juniors. The reason is because the fascias do not have fibroblasts. 
So if you do interfacial dissection, then there are no fibroblasts to cause fibrosis. And therefore, when you do laparoscopic surgery, an interfacial dissection is much better done. And therefore, you do not get adhesions because there are no fibroblasts. So what are these fascias? One fascia is called as the denonvillous fascia, which covers the posterior wall of the vagina. The second fascia is the cervicovesical fascia, which covers the anterior wall of the entire vagina, covers the fascia. The transition, the basic rule of anatomy, all veins lie below the fascia. So if you do not damage the fascia, if you do not go underneath the fascia, you will never get any venous bleeding. And the third fascia is an endopelvic fascia, which covers the levator ani and the obturator vein and obturator muscle. This fascia you encounter when you do the birch repair or any kind of suspension or TOT or TVT. All the veins lie beneath the fascia. The endopelvic fascia covers the obturator internus. It is enveloping the connective tissue as long as you do not damage the fascia. So next time you do birch repair, try remaining superficial to the fascia. You will never get the bleeding. The moment you transgress the fascia, you will get the bleeding because there are veins which are lying underneath this fascia. So here is a true picture of showing you these are the fascias. This is the area where you are going to do the birch repair. That is the uh, ligament, which is the cruciate ligament on the upper side. But if you do not damage the fascias, you can see that the veins lie beneath the fascia and dissection of the endopelvic fascia. You can easily see how easily you can do this. What about denonvillous fascia? There are two layers of denonvillous fascia. One layer of denonvillous fascia covers the anterior wall of vagina. This is very, very the posterior wall of the vagina. And one layer covers the anterior wall of the rectum. This is probably the most important fascia because this is what you are going to encounter when you do endometriosis. So that's how you should understand that. And in good old days, when you put your fingers between the rectum and the vagina, it bled because you went between the fascia and the vagina. The veins of the vagina lie between this denonvillous fascia and the vagina. So if you do not go between that, there is no bleeding. How do you dissect this? The dissection is done with a very, very simple thing. Antiward the uterus. And then you can see the two uterosacrals. The denonvillous fascia lies between the two uterosacral. And it is done with an idea of fat belongs to the rectum. Just remain above the fascia and you will always prevent the rectal injury because the fat belongs to the fascia and this is how you can do the dissection. Again, pictures to show you how the veins lie underneath the fascia. Very simple thing. All this is very clearly seen on laparoscopy. Probably you knew about this. I am just giving words to what is taking place in your mind. We did this dissection long time back. But what is important is if you follow the anatomical rules, there is no way you can do bad surgery. So this is how you can do this. I'm going to show you how it looks like. You can see even in the presacral fascia, that is, this is the dissection behind the rectum. The cardinal rule of the body is all the veins lie beneath the fascia. There are the fascia. This is the presacral fascia. And you can see that the presacral veins also lie beneath the fascia. So everywhere it is all about doing the facial dissection. This dissection you may be needing when you are doing a scalpo suspension or when you are doing endometriosis with resection of the rectum. This is the pre-sacral dissection, but just a video to show all veins, the cardinal rule is all veins lie below the fascia. Then comes the cervicovesical fascia, probably the most important fascia of your life. Why do I say this? Because the cervicovesical fascia covers the anterior wall of the vagina. The bladder lies anterior to the cervicovesical fascia. The vagina lies posterior to the cervicovesical fascia or beneath this. The cervicovesical fascia then splits on the lateral side to divide into anterior cervicovesical ligament and the posterior cervicovesical ligament to allow the ureter to pass into the bladder. And this is the weakest point, and this is the point from where the posterior cervicovesical ligament and the anterior cervicovesical ligament, commonly known to us as ureteric tunnel. 
So cervical vesical spatia splits into the anterior and the posterior cervical vesical ligament. The posterior cervical vesical ligament merges with the endopelvic fascia, and it is through this fascia that the transobturator tape comes and lies in the mid ureteric region. So that's the way in which it is given. The anterior cervical vesical ligament is called as a ureteric tunnel. So how do you use this knowledge? The bladder dissection should be done with fat belongs to the bladder. So you lie underneath the go below the fat and lie above the cervical vesical fascia because the venous plexus lies beneath the fascia. So this is how you can do this. You can see fat belongs to the bladder. Just remain below the fat. You can see this is the uterine artery. The uterine or the bladder lies anterior to the uterine artery. You can see this is the fat. This is the cervical vesical fascia. You can see the veins of the vagina below the fascia. If you go underneath the fascia, that means there is bleeding. And that is the most important thing that you have to understand. What about the pelvic ligaments? There are various ligaments which are very, very important. They are the condensation. So uterosacral ligament is a fibromuscular support. The macandrods is a fibroareolar support. And the pubocervical ligament is again the fibrocervical. But all these are a single fan-shaped area. So when you would want to do radical surgery, the uterosacral, the macandrods, and the anterior parametrium are one single fan-shaped divided into the fibromuscular, fibroareolar, and again, a fibromuscular support, which is there. The McEnroe's ligament, the concept is that it is the only area where, through which the ligaments, with, through which the lymphatics and the venous drainage takes place. So when you do a radical surgery, it is about taking the McEnroe's ligament as laterally as possible so that you can take the lymphatics as laterally as possible. So cancer spread takes place through the lymphatics and it is this area which is what you have to know. So it is about the parametrion. Splitting of the vesical anterior cervical and posterior cervical vesical ligament allows the tumor to go out through this weak area. And therefore, the first a time that you get the cervical cancer going out or, a, and, or it is advanced, you see hydroureter or hydronephrosis. And the intact denonvillous fascia prevents the cancer from spreading posteriorly into the rectum. The cervical vesical fascia anteriorly prevents the cancer to go into the bladder, but through the lateral area, which is weak, because the cervical vesical fascia splits into two, there is the area. Coming to the spaces, the paravesical space, the pararectal space, and the rectovaginal space, and the presacral space. If you ask me one space which a common gynecologist should know, I feel it's the pararectal space. Pararectal space is a space lateral to the rectum. It is divided by the ureter into two spaces. The lateral space, which is called as a lats go space. The medial space, which is called as the okabayashi space. The lateral space is lateral to the ureter. And you can see the only structure that crosses transversely the lateral space is the uterine artery. If you know how to dissect the pararectal space, then you can easily take care of the uterine artery. The medial pararectal space is having the hypogastric nerve. How do you approach these spaces? You approach these spaces either from the medial approach, that is you cut the peritoneum medial to the infant pelvic ligament, this is called as the endometriotic approach or the lateral approach, which is called as the oncological approach. But the important thing is, how do you dissect the pararectal space? Remain parallel and lateral to the ureter. These are potential spaces. They do not see, are not seen as soon as you open the peritoneum. So dissect parallel and lateral to the ureter. The only structure that prevents you from going down will be the uterine artery. And that's how you do the dissection. So you can see the pararectal space, the lateral pararectal space. The only structure that crosses that is the uterine artery. So I'm going to show you how you dissect this. This is the medial approach. You can see you cut the peritoneum medial to the infundibulo pelvic ligament. The first structure that you see is the ureter. Very simple. Just stretch the peritoneum. 
see the ureter and now you remain medial to the ureter and cut the peritoneum now you go underneath the infundibular pelvic ligament you see the external iliac artery but you do not see the internal iliac artery cut the posterior leaf of the broad ligament once this is seen look at the strokes remain parallel and lateral to the ureter just parallel and lateral to the ureter and push parallel and lateral to the ureter the first structure that you see is the internal iliac artery you can see the posterior division dipping down and the anterior division is traversing for a long distance continue a dissection at a time you will see you are not able to go down the first structure that prevents you from going down uterine artery very simple i have trained hundreds of people to take the uterine artery at its origin and now you see the second branch which is the superior vesical artery go between the uterine artery and the superior vesical artery and you will see the para vesical space now how do you dissect this now you remain parallel to the uterine artery and push first you remain parallel to the ureter and push now you remain parallel to the uterine artery and push that opens up the para vesical space the only structure that crosses the para rectal and the para vesical space laterally is the uterine artery and the vein clip it end of the story very simple you can do a very very easy job and this is a completely duplicable procedure which is what i and now when you want to dissect the medial space remain parallel and medial to the ureter remain parallel and medial to the ureter the only structure which is running parallel to the ureter is the hypogastric nerve so you can see the hypogastric nerve here which is the area and then if you trace the nerve medial to the ureter this space is called as the fourth space which is the space of yabuki this is only for the oncologist the thing important thing to remember hypogastric nerve always lies medial to the ureter and this is what is important it is related to the uterine vein what about the paravesical space the paravesical space is the space which is lateral to the bladder it is a completely avascular space devoid of any kind of structures and it is the space which lies between the uterine artery and the superior vesical uh, and it is medial to the obliterated hypogastric artery the prevesical space is a space which is anterior to the bladder commonly called as the cave of redzius and this dissection is also done very simply it's a complete avascular space so all these spaces are avascular spaces by the definition of gray they cannot be called as spaces because space is something which should be lined by the peritoneum so these i feel are surgical spaces i have contended this i have contradicted gray and i have published this that it is a wrong thing to call it as a space according to definition of gray but these are potential surgical spaces and these have to be opened by the surgeon so how do you do the dissection of the prevesical space again a simple thing the bladder lies between the two obliterated hypogastric artery also called as a medial umbilical ligament you can see the anterior the obliterated this is the medial umbilical ligament nothing but the obliterated area fat belongs to the bladder but because you are going anterior to the bladder remain above the fat when you are going between the bladder and the uterus go below the fat so just see complete a vascular plane very very simple you should not get any bleeding all the spaces that you have to see you have to master them because they are a vascular spaces and that defines the anatomy anatomy has been been made by god in such a way that surgeons can operate without losing a drop of blood you just have to enter the right spaces you can see how without any energy source i am remaining above the fat and you can see that we have gone into the prevesical space very very easily following the anatomical rule lying between the two umbilical area what about rectovaginal space this is the cave of redzius i have already talked about it but you see the dissection start your dissection especially in endometriosis or any kind of oncological surgery or wherever you feel dissect the ureter you can see the ureter is always remaining medial anterior the uterus as much possible because the ureter lies at the base of the uterosacral when you do a tlh remain at the apex now you see 
that without using any energy source, what I am following is the anatomical step. Fat belongs to the rectum and you remain above the fat. Look at that and you can easily do this space dissection. Very nicely, this is the uh, rectovaginal space dissection and this is behind the rectum. Again, your specific thing, if you don't want to use the scissors, same thing you can do with the harmonic. Just give the stretch on the rectum, anti-word the uterus, simple steps, anti-word the uterus. Two uterosacrals are seen on the either side, lie between the two uterosacral because rectum does not go lateral to the uterosacral and the ureter lies at the base. So you go there, remain above the fat and once you remain, you can see two layers, just one hand goes up, one hand goes down and the carbon dioxide will do the magic. This is how you can do a very good rectovaginal space dissection. So again, the same principles that I'm showing. So dictum, fat belongs to the rectum, remain above the fat because the veins lie beneath the denonvillous fascia. So breach of fascia may lead to bleeding. What is the fourth space of Yabuki, which I just showed you in the previous dissection? It is a space through which the nerve finally enters into the bladder. It is the anatomical landmark of which we have published is the uterine vein. If you remain medial, if you take the uterine vein medial to the ureter, you do nerve sparing. If you do take the uterine vein lateral to the ureter, it is non-nerve sparing. A simple anatomical landmark. Every person, surgeon will not be able to dissect the nerve. Remember the anatomical landmark. If you take the uterine vein, Medial to the ureter, it is nerve sparing. If you take it lateral, these are the rules that you have to follow. These are the rules that we have shown by our dissection. Again, a certain thing to show you the bladder dissection. Whenever in trouble, start on the lateral side. So I'm going to show you how we can do the bladder dissection because finally it is about using this knowledge of anatomy. So when you want to do the bladder dissection, lift up the peritoneum. Now you see I am going between the peritoneum and the bladder. Now, this is the uterovesical fold. The commonest mistake that I have seen is people go between the bladder and the peritoneum. You see what is the dictum? Fat belongs to the bladder. So you are going above the bladder rather than going beneath the bladder, which is wrong. So this is a wrong plane that we are taking because you are just dissecting the peritoneum of the bladder. Then... Just to know that this is a wrong plane, because it is a vascular plane, but we may continue to do this dissection. This has been specifically done to show you how mistakes can occur. Now you know, follow the rules. This was a wrong plane, so go below the fat. Just go below the fat, because you have to go and separate the bladder from the vagina. It is, you are not separating the bladder from the peritoneum. And remain anterior to the to the U. So again, you can see that was a wrong plane. This is the correct plane of dissection. So now you come back and see and go beneath the fat. That's the fat which is seen. Now go underneath the fat. Look at the way. This is the peritoneum. We made a wrong plane. This video was specifically created because I saw my juniors doing this on a routine basis that they're getting excited that they have gone into a good plane, but that's a wrong plane. Fat belongs to the bladder, go underneath the fat. Otherwise, this is how you can do without any energy source, just go below the fat. This is the correct plane of dissection, which is important. And therefore, again, you see, this is the fat and you go underneath the fat here and you will find a nice plane which is existing between these two areas. So this is how the bladder dissection is done. You can see this is the ureter, the uterine artery. The bladder always lies anterior to the uterine artery. Another video to show this because this is what is commonly wanted by the gynecologist. Uh, how to do the bladder dissection in caesarean section. Come from the lateral side. See this. Fat belongs to the bladder. Don't go between the peritoneum and bladder. You can see this is a plane which can be easily created. Just give stretch to the bladder. Go underneath the fat. Fat belongs to the bladder. For God's sake, believe the anatomy. Just believe the anatomy. Use a vascular dissection without any energy source. And you will be able to do this 
very, very easily. The moment you see the bleeding, it's a wrong plane because these are avascular planes. So these are basic dictums that should be followed. Finally, the nerves of the pelvis. There are four nerves that you see, the genitofemoral nerve, the obturator nerve, the hypogastric nerve, which is very, very important. And of course, then the S234, that is the inferior hypogastric plexus. Preservation of the nerve is very, very important. And this is more so because more and more of you are doing endometrial cancers and endometriosis. So nerve preservation is very important. Genitofemoral nerves lies lateral to the external iliac artery. The obturator nerve you encounter during the lymph node dissection and the hypogastric nerve is very important for endometriosis. So you can see underneath the peritoneum, the genitofemoral nerve, which lies lateral to the obturator artery. And then you can see the obturator nerve, which lies between the two bifurcations. Important thing, genitofemoral nerve gets damaged during, if you try to take out the nodes, lateral to the external iliac artery. Obturator nerve, the dictum I've already told you, remain anterior to the obturator nerve when you do this nodal dissection, which is very important. What about the hypogastric plexus? The hypogastric plexus lies at the bifurcation of the aorta. It is formed by the postganglionic sympathetic fibers coming from S234. They form a plexus from where the two nerves go like this on the either side. They are called as the hypogastric nerves. These are the hypogastric nerve. In the lower picture, you can see the superior hypogastric plexus from where the nerve go on the posterior lateral side of the rectum. And they reach up to the uterosacular. At the level of the uterine vein, they are joined by the S234 fibers, which make this inferior hypogastric plexus or Van Franker Hauser's plexus. What is important for you to understand is that the nerves lie at the apex of the uterosacral, uh, at the base of the uterosacral. The ureter also lies at the base of the uterosacral. How do you use this knowledge of anatomy? In a total laparoscopic hysterectomy, if you remain at the apex of the uterosacral, the nerve and the ureter will be preserved. Simple. Whenever you are in trouble, antivert the uterus. Remain at the apex of the uterosacral because you know that the nerves and the ureter lies at the base of the uterosacral and always lateral to the uterosacral. There is no way the nerve and the ureter is going to come medial to the uterosacral. So this is how you use the knowledge of anatomy. You can see the nerve, the S234 nerves, then they are called as the pelvic splanchnic nerves. That is the parasympathetic fibers are joining at the level of the S234 till that time the nerve is only sympathetic. It causes the complete, uh, it is spintric to the uh, sphincter till it is joined by the S234 nerves. So knowing the anatomy is very, very important. Finally, a word about the ureter, which is our friend. If you consider this, there are certain mis uh, misconcepts about the ureter. The first important thing is that the ureter has no segmental blood supply. It has blood supply, one branch from the internal iliac artery, one branch from the uterine artery, and one branch from the gonadal artery. Our rest of the time, the ureter carries its own mesentery. And that is precisely the reason that the ureter can be dissected from the sacral preventory up to the ureterovesical junction. The ureter is like this. It lies between the uterine artery at the top. You can see the ureter carrying its own mesentery and the uterine vein, which lies underneath this. So it lies in the fork between this, and this is what has to be recognized. You can see this ureter. You can see the ureter carrying its own mesentery. Important thing to remember, it lies in the fork between the artery and the vein. That is very, very important to understand. Here you can see that the uterine ureter is carrying its own mesentery. So mesentery lies on the medial side of the ureter. If that is the anatomy, dissect the ureter anterior and on the lateral wall. Never dissect between the ureter and the medial side because the mesentery lies on the medial side of the ureter. So principles of ureteric dissection, dissection should be done lateral and anterior to the ureter, not on the medial side, no use of energy source, and always it is better 
to dissect the anterior and the posterior cervical vesical ligament the ureter lies at a distance of almost 2.5 cm away from the uterus that is the distance that we have measured it always lies at the base of the uterosacral so if you cannot find the ureter remain at the apex of the uterosacral and you will never have any damage to the ureter so this is how you can trace the ureter so this is a film to show you you dissect the you can start the dissection of the ureter you can see how the ureter is carrying its own mesentery it looks nice that is the mesentery which is always on the medial side so if you see this is the basic area where you can see that that it is always better to dissect the ureter with the mesentery and then avoid the damage to the entire thing again where is the ureter so you can see this is how you can dissect the entire ureter and this ureter you can see is carrying its own mesentery we are going from the lateral side avoid damaging the ureter this is the ureter continue to see the ureter similarly on the left side you can see that this is always preserve the mesentery the mesentery of the ureter lies on the medial side never on the lateral side so you can see that this is the exposure of the uterine artery you can see the exposure of the ureter look at the way in which the mesentery is nicely seen over there this is very very important never catch the ureter and do the dissection it is not a good thing to do that and then as it enters into the bladder this is the cervical vesical ligament always called as a ureteric tunnel it's a misnomer it carries two veins these are the these are the vesical veins which drain through the uterine vein and therefore it is always better to use clips over there because if there is a bleeding then you try to coagulate and this is the most vulnerable area maximum ureteric injuries are happening at the level where the ureter enters into the bladder that's because there are veins which are crossing that through the ureteric tunnel and then you see as you take care of the anterior cervical vesical ligament the ureter automatically goes away on the lateral side so certain things that you have to understand and do then it is the area and that is the posterior cervical vesical ligament which also carries the two veins and this is how you can do this dissection very very nicely without any damage to the ureter so finally uh, what is the anterior parametrium that we are going to show you this is the yabuki space as i said the veins of the vagina which is clipping of these veins is very important because if you do not clip the veins and use just the energy source there is a likelihood of you damaging this area look at the way in which the ureter is handled you can see the mesentery very nicely with the veins look at here and you can see the mesentery and this is how you can do the entire dissection so i'm not going to show you nerve sparing radical hysterectomy but this is the road map of a uh, pelvis ureter is the most medial structure tubular structure you remain medial to the ureter there is no way you can damage internal iliac the internal iliac artery remains the most medial of the vascular elements if you do not remain go lateral to the internal iliac artery which is the trait tree for a common gynecologist you will never damage the obturator nerve and the external iliac vessels so what is important is whenever you want to do surgery whether there is anybody listening or no repeat your words in the theater this is what i am going to do this is what i am searching so you will start doing routine surgeries if you follow the rules and if you follow the rules and as you start understanding the anatomy you will realize that you are able to do more complicated surgeries and then when you do these complicated surgeries believing in mind that i will follow the anatomical rules you will realize you are doing something which you never thought in your life this is not a surgery for some elite surgeon you all can do it just follow the rules this is what we have published in the most prestigious journal of figo surgical pelvic anatomy in gynecology oncology so whatever i am doing i have published this this is what has gone this took publication took 2 years because we went against gray anatomy which was described a bible of anatomy and something which we said was not right because finally gray did not have laparoscope we have a laparoscope 
our anatomical knowledge is better and this is a published article and again facial anatomy and its relevance in safe laparoscopic hysterectomy this is an article published in jmic there's also a video on that so what are the take home messages ladies and gentlemen at the end of the area uterine or cervical pathologies do not reach up to the sacral promontory so in difficult situation start your dissection at sacral promontory dissection should be done always parallel to the tibular structure always identify the fascias remain outside the fascias remaining medial to the ureter will avoid damage to internal iliac artery remaining medial to the internal iliac artery will avoid damage to the external iliac vessels fat belongs to the bladder fat belongs to the rectum ureter lies in the fork between the uterine artery and the uterine vein ureter always carries its own mesentery most important the statement is there are no major variations in pelvic anatomy so when a surgeon comes and tells me oh i had a very bad case because there was distorted anatomy i say excuse me there is no distorted anatomy the distortion is in your mind and not in the anatomy anatomy is constant and therefore it is very important for you to understand so again i thank vidya bhat and the entire kasoga family for giving me this opportunity to present a work which i am very 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 sensitive about which i love this comes from the depth of my heart thank you again thank you all of you to give time to listening to this lecture thank you very much thank you so much sir that was a wonderful flawless uh, presentation like it was uh, really uh, pleased to the eyes and the ears like uh, we would not have had such a great uh, speaker on this topic um, i manjula, request you i can i can just make out manjula's expressions and yeah. her feel <laughs> she is so spellbound as usual sir impeccable your surgical steps are amazing i mean always a feast to watch and every time i see i learn more so it was simply wonderful sir thank you so much for such a brilliant brilliant presentation uh, may i ask hiramat sir to just do we have questions Ma manjula in the questions illa because uh, there are no questions there are only compliments yeah only yeah, compliments, compliments. i don't think so people had any kind of uh, doubts after him explaining so nicely each and every thing uh, so good with the video uh, recording and his uh, uh, voice thank you vidya for uh, giving such a wonderful uh, speaker uh, on this pleasure occasion. always uh, i request guru drona i always call him and guru is always welcome <laughs> very nice i request mg sir to give his expert comments mg is sir is not there he doesn't Hello? seem to be there uh mg hiramat sir has some problem in the okay. network so uh, murlidhar sir would you like to say something murlidhar sir is there anyway bharti bharti can uh, Uh, well, uh, uh, as I just told you, the whole audience is spellbound. It was like watching a, a Bharatanatyam show in a, a jam-packed theater with such artistic <laughs> moves and uh, so per, uh, perfect. Like it was an arangetram, I would say, of the pelvic anatomy. Uh, sir, uh, from Kasoga, we are really indebted and privileged to have such an eminent speaker with us today displaying the pelvic anatomy just like opening a book it was just like opening a book and exactly. you're just seeing the the 3d images there sir we uh, express our sincere uh, thanks and gratitude for having been with us today and i'm sure this uh, session of yours of yours is going to motivate many of our uh, youngsters uh, to take up this field of this exciting and uh, what do you say illuminated field of uh, endoscopic surgery and we thank you again sir i thank uh, dr vidya bhat the convener of this program for getting this star uh, from the galaxy onto the kasoga uh, screen <laughs> thank you thank, uh, thank you, you dr 
the star it is the star yeah. Country. The star, I mean, it's like the pole. It's like the pole, the polar star. It's not just an ordinary star. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, onto this uh, screen of ours. And then Parthi. I thank uh, the. Parthi, can I yes, join? Sir? Yes, no, sir. Please. Please. We were waiting for you. No problem. Now we I'm waiting for you. My mobile. Okay. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. We are waiting for you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sailesh, sir. It was uh, really a pleasure to listen to you. And uh, we are all uh, thought that uh, the Gray's anatomy is the only Bible. But uh, you have come Correct. out so many things which are really seen by us. And uh, now as a principal of a medical college, I am thinking whether the students should be given the cadaver to dissect or they should be taught <laughs> by laparoscopy anatomy. <laughs> because this anatomical, yeah, this anatomical view was so wonderful. I still remember 10 of us were posted for one table for dissecting the cadaver. Hardly we were able to see anything there. Now, I think even the students must be made to learn by this endoscopic way. So beautifully we have presented, sir. And it was just a refreshing to all of us regarding arteries, fascia, and spaces, and the endoscopy, whether it is going to replace the cadaveric dissection uh, time will tell us, but you are really the master and we are very grateful to you, sir. With these few words, I would like to thank you once again from KCOG. I request Bharti to continue her vote of thanks. Yes, sir. So, I mean, words can't express uh, the gratitude we have for you, sir. But I think, yes, we have to uh, say goodbye and, of course, till we meet again. So, our sincere thanks to you. I thank the president, uh, the dean of KCOG, Dr. Hema Divakar, uh, the, uh, the secretary, Dr. Vidya Bhatt, and the chairperson, Dr. Murli Pai, for uh, organizing this excellent webinar on uh, in the skill transfer program. I thank our office bearers, the president, Dr. Basuraj Sajjan, the uh, chief patron, Dr. Na Dr. M.G. Hiremat, the patron, Dr. Nagraj, and uh, Dr. Manjula Patil for uh, comparing this session and all the office bearers for being part of this excellent session. I thank all the members of KSOG, all the president secretaries of all the societies for logging in and making this webinar an excellent one. I thank the, the tech team of KSOG for uh, having this uh, very stream, uh, streamless uh, program without any technical glitches. We thank all of you and wishing you all a good weekend and uh, may you all be safe. And Dr. Shailesh, we uh, look forward to be associated with you and watching these wonderful movies. And another thing I want to thank you is for making the ureter look so delicious. It was looking so nice at this time. We've been sitting here and I think all of us, it's time to take a break and Delicious maybe having, nice word. <laughs> having a burger or a, a hot dog, whatever. Exactly. But don't think your, the ureter is there. Bite into it with confidence. Thank you very much, sir. A good night and namaste to all. Namaste, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bharti, ma'am. Uh, and uh, thank you, Puntam Baker, sir. And uh, thank you, Vidya, for giving such a nice speaker. And thank you all the delegates uh, and the faculty to join uh, today's section, session and make this event a great success. Thank you, one and all. Goodbye, be safe. Bye. Bye. Bye, sir. Namaste.